Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. This time I want to share a video on how to use uh, ISTA BMW technical information and why it's so important to use this if you are actually working on Mini Cooper, BMW, or Rolls Royce. And most likely, if you are working in any other manufacturer, what are you missing when you're not using the original information or the original diagnostics, calibrations, uh, programming page? Uh, we are bearing, uh, we are being drawn to a common use of aftermarket tools because yes, it is a lot faster to connect an hotel or a top down or a snap on, you know, a scanner and try to do a diagnostics on a car because you know that will work into a lot of manufacturers. But are, are we missing something? Are we really helping ourselves? Or we are just falling into the game that they're trying to play with us because lately more and more those companies are increasing their charges are being more greedy and they're trying to make us fall into a recurring subscription that is becoming i mean outrageous um right now hotel wants to charge two thousand dollars to update uh, I'll tell Maxis Ultra, come on, $2,000, are you kidding me, per year? I can pay better to work in BMW, $2,300 to BMW, get the uh, icon, which is going to cost me, um, you know, and it all depends on where you get it, but realistically, they're like $700, yes, if, if you're going to have to wait, if you don't want to wait, there is other uh, ways to get it and it's going to be more expensive but yeah let's say you know that the price is seven hundred dollars so and you're going to have the original information your camp you know the, the availability to do programming all the latest sec, uh, service information bulletins recalls and everything at the palm of your hand so is it a snap on better is it hotel better of course not of course not yes there is a still some use for those tools that the original uh, scanner or diagnostic software that BMW offers is going is not going to offer. We all know that in case of BMW, they don't offer graphing. I don't understand why um, they have never done. They have never done that. I think the mentality of the of the dealer software is to let the engineer see what the technician cannot and then at the end take a decision and make it global because you know this is uh, the way the uh, dealers keep their budgets low well, by having yes master technicians and everything but not letting take the you know the ball on their hands to decide what is necessary to do and just you know follow instructions they keep them on a salary you know what i mean or or a uh, a flat rate price so but that is another subject so what i want to show you is how important is the original information when you can use uh, an aftermarket scanner and why they're not good i mean the only thing that i really use an aftermarket scanner is like i said is to record a trip uh, a diagnostic trip so i just put the scanner on the seat and record the values and then i come back do i need to have uh, an updated scanner for that um, not, not really i can buy uh, an hotel ultra use uh, that has up to 2020 2022 and don't have to pay the greedy two thousand dollars the hotel is trying to pocket for nothing because realistically all this is chinese software that they're just being sharing in multiple platforms and now they're trying to again get us all technicians into pay and pay and pay and pay and pay and pay and, pay. and at the end of the year it's like where well, you know uh, we're just losing so much money because realistically, uh, how much can we write off as a technician? Yes, if you're a business, you can write all those down. But as a person, we can just write as much as they let us on taxes, right? So it will become an expense that you cannot write off and is an expense. That it's just an expense. It's nothing you can do. So it's a waste of your money. So uh, again, let me just... All right, guys, uh, I have, as you can see, the screen recording going on. Make sure everything is good. So 
I'm going to go step by step a little bit. So for those that are not familiar to BMW ISTA, uh, this is the technical information website. You can just go over to BMW Tech Info dot bmwgroup.com and then you can buy a subscription which is going to cost um, you can buy per day per month or per year and it's very affordable for what they offer you because you can you will be able to do coding programming uh, yes when you're doing coding programming there is some um, I will say some recommendations I want to give if you have anything that is below 2015 be careful uh, all F series, there are 2000, they are being already programmed from 2000, I will even say 2016 and up, you're okay to do programming, otherwise be careful with the HUD, which is, you know, the, the screen uh, that can be brick. So you want to do, when you're doing programming, you want to make sure that your icon is not connected directly to your laptop. So you're going to connect the, uh, you're going to have to have a wire internet connection to a, a switch. Um, how should I have that here? So let me see. Um, Ethernet. This one. This one is probably uh, one of the best ones you can get. It's cheap, it's good. Uh, this has five ports. Uh, one thing that I want to also address is you see how number five port is kind of like separated from the one, two, three, four. You want to make sure that your internet cable is connected into port five. Then any other, uh, because I mean, you can connect up to five different components, five different laptops or anything you want to connect in there. All right. So this is a good one. Again, just you see what I did on, on, on the search and you can have that. All right. So, but, so you're going to have a wire connector, uh, connection to the internet, and then that switch, you're going to connect your icon to one and then your laptop wire it to that switch. Make sure that you disable all um, screen uh, savers. Uh, make sure that your computer is not going to sleep and um, Wi-Fi is turned off and you connect it like that. So it's, it will be good for programming. This is only when you're doing programming like that. You are not going to uh, break anything. When you're doing, again, a full vehicle programming, this is the steps that you have to do in order to not uh, have any problems. If anything happens and you have set up this way, let's say you know that your uh, HOA uh, became uh, black and it's not coming on, BMW will be able to restore it because by having it connect your laptop this way to a switch, all those files will be saved into the BMW, uh, let's say cloud or servers right so you will be okay and that's what they recommend to do it this way all right so in order to set um your bmw software in your laptop you're going to need to uh again subscribe when you're there you're going to click into aos again you're going to agree with everything that you have already done there and you're going to click in here you can select as you can see we got bmw programming ista p this is for each chassis a9 is a91 to 3 a46 or whatever so that is diagnostic same programming for those that takes a bigger amount of space in your hard drive especially because this is like getting obsolete more and more right we are now an fg and so chassis is the newest one Still, we got vehicles. We service some of the vehicles like that in our shop too, as well. So we have, in if we need to do a programming, we need to download that. It takes like around 100. I think uh, BMW recommends that you have 120 gigs available at least in order to download ISTA P. For the new F chassis, you're going to select just yes, ISTA vehicle diagnostics. That will be diagnostics and programming for the F chassis. And if you want to open just uh, manuals or diagrams or repair uh, or parts, then you can just click on there and we will see that in a second. And then you got all, 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 all these other tools. You can contact AOS support in case you have a problem to set up your laptop or so. But yeah, so when you scroll down in here, you're going to need to download 
uh, icon fir firmware. If it's the new icon, then you need to download the icon next firmware. If you're using uh, JPass through, um, I would not recommend to use a just by through for programming. Better try to get your icon, but again, I have seen people doing it. I will uh, try to stay as much as possible with the original. It's less expensive than buying a JPass through. If you're working for a European as a European shop, you should get your setup for each of those manufacturers like that. You are safe. So you're going to download the icon firmware or icon next. Then you're going to download the uh, ISTA programming data and the ISTA client installation file. So this is what you want to have uh, in, in order to use ISTA. And then these technical requirements, as you can see right here at the bottom, uh, if you're running uh, Windows 10, this is probably not necessary because it's already in Windows 10. Um, this is the latest, uh, the BMW support is Windows 10. This computer I'm using here is in my lab, so I'm using, I'm, I'm, I'm running Windows 11, and it works good to check information and do even diagnostics. I would not do programming with Windows 11 because it's definitely not, not made for that yet. And then you want to make sure that you download Visual C++ and Java Runtime Environment. Again, follow these three recommendations in here. When you download these files, um, you will see I have it in here. So I got downloaded here. Uh, you see, Ista. you want to run uh, to unzip this first. I already did it. You see right here, 26.189 and then 26.189 in here. So it's already unzipped. So you're going to go there and you're going to look for this installation dot exe this is the one is the application you're going to run you it can actually open a dialog that says don't run just click in more and that will open another dialog uh, let me actually do it so we can see because i think this one might run straight yeah see it's because it's already installed so uh, you sure you want to cancel it? Yeah, so, so you will see that dialog. Just click more, and that will open install anyway. And then just accept all or any other um, pop-ups that will uh, be populated. After you install this one, then you install the ISTA OSS programming data. This is uh, the the actual programming, follow again the instructions, and then most likely you're gonna to have to reboot the computer after that. All right, so after you do that, what we're going to do, let's say we already have everything installed on the computer, now we are going to click on the start. If everything is installed properly, it will run and it will work. Like, okay, it will download, uh, as, you know, like that little file you saw there, that is to start, ISTA every single time. Again, ISTA is Integrated Services Technical Application. That's what ISTA stands for. All right, so everything is good in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, select one of the beans that I have from a customer that I was helping yes, uh, yesterday. He has, um, I think it's a 2011 Mini Cooper, and he was trying to, you know, well, he was telling me that he has problem with no light. I mean, the lights are staying on, no windows working, and some other electrical issues. I'm like, well, that's a very common situation on the Mini Coopers, and that is the the FRM, the full well module. I said, you know, just send me your bean to make sure it's part of the campaign. It's a recall campaign nation uh, nationwide. It's now into uh, they actually uh, move it up to 10 years, and I think that's 156,000 miles. So let me just open that one second, but um, actually I'm trying to, yeah, well, we can open it no matter what is in here, but yeah, so you see full one module for unlimited warranty extension to 10 years or 156,000 miles or so whatever happened first, he was part of the campaign. As you can see, I got the, the B number in here. It's a R57. I did this for him yesterday and I said, you know, just call the dealer giving your bin number and tell them that you have a, a dead FRM and that will, they have to take you. I'm not sure if it's available or not, but it, it is a campaign and that's what I recommend a customer to do so. But how did I get to that? All right, so let me paste the bin number. Um, on the weekends, uh, this is on a Sunday. I tried this yesterday, it's pretty much the same. During the week, BMW is very strong. When there, because this is just, um, 
this they just come up with an update for ISTA. Usually when it's like that, Saturdays and Sundays it's still working. A lot of people download it and everything, so their service is a little slow. Still, you can check information, but it might give you sometimes like a, um, not an, like not all the information have been downloaded for uh, the vehicle. Uh, like here, not all information about the vehicle or from the vehicle could be retrieved. The display data is not unique. The connection to the backend service is currently currently not possible. So uh, again, we can we can stop. Then now we can either uh, we can make this a full screen, which I think is probably better for what we're doing, right? Okay, in here since I'm not connecting to the car, so what am I going to be using this? Obviously for repair information for diagrams for everything right so i can go over to vehicle management in this side uh, as soon as you go there the first thing that is going to be populated is going to be repair and maintenance you got every single thing you need in here to do a repair so let's say you know i need to um remove the oil pan so you will be getting familiar with this um groups so these are the groups that bmw uses for uh, and it's been using forever. So you will know that uh, 33 is the rear axle, uh, 32 is the steering, 11 is engine. You see like 11, 12, 12 is engine electrical system. So you will get more and more familiar the more you use this. So if I click in here, it will populate on the right all the you know sub sub menus that are here. Or if I click in here, then I can then select that and boom, all pen is right here. I can, you see, because uh, a lot of the stuff in here is in German, like all these um, letters, AZD, it means nothing to us. Rep, yes, you can say repair information, but this is mostly in German. And you will see like uh, when you have a wire diagram, it's SSP. So you will get more and more familiar as the most that you use. But again, you can always, when having this, just click on it, right? So. Uh, what is SAD? Uh, let's see what that is. So you click in there, you click display. Are these the torque, torque specs? Mm, maybe, right? Yes, they are the tor torque specs. So you can just close that and then open the repair information. That Let's say you're, you're doing a, a, you know, a remove and install all the old pen. Now you have everything with recommendations, torque specs, the tools that you need to use for this and all the step-by-step -step information so uh, use liquid gasket 2.2 so even tell you uh, what they recommend to use if i close here and i want to revisit those information uh, the nice thing about bmw is if i click uh, let me just make sure here uh, any of the documents that i have open that will be populated and you can revisit it in here so that's, you can print it, you can do whatever you want in there. All right, so let's go and move forward to more of this and stay tuned because this is a lot of good information if you're a technician and you're, or you have access to something like this and you're working, because some customers are very far away from a dealer and they're like, okay, how can I work in my car? Because I, I you know, I cannot be four or four hours to try to diagnose a car that, can, that is not a star. I need some help. This is probably your best help. Uh, because even if you don't have the icon, even if you don't have the, um, like, you know, the original diagnostic or calibrations or anything like that, you can just buy a day and then access all this repair information, wire diagram. Uh, so you will get very, very easy where to get your, uh, you know, sensors or stuff like that. Because again, I'm going to step by step, stay tuned. All right, so we go to troubleshooting. Come on, okay, in troubleshooting, now we have, as soon as I click in there, let's see, repair instruction, we have product uh, structure and tech search. If I click on troubleshooting, there is now a different menu. I can still do tech search, or I can do function structure, component structure, okay, function structure. And function structure is the powertrain, the chassis, body, and then functional wire diagrams. So in here, these are, uh, diagrams that are not included on these other ones, right? So we got the powertrain. You can select the engine electronics. This is what I usually select because in here, like again, if you click on the name or on, yeah, on the on the phrase, it will populate on the right the whole thing. If you want to select something, uh, let's say, and this is something I want to uh, explain here too. Since I am not connected to a car, all these ABLs are 
test plans, which are great. If you are in the car and you're having a fall, you can run the test plan and it will tell you what to check and proceed. Like, I mean, again, remember, this is the engineers thinking that we're really dumb technicians, but it is sometimes information that you cannot get even on the, um, on the computer because um, I'm going to jump a little out from here just to show you one thing. Because let's say, you know, if I want to run and see what the uh, ambient, uh, not the ambient, the intake pressure sensor or the boost pressure sensor are doing, well, I will go over to the, um, well, I can, like, since I'm not connected, I might not be able to show you that here. But what I would do is I'll go over to the control unit three and then select the engine computer, the DME, right? Well, those speeds are not there. That's, they, they don't show you the pressure or the boost pressure or the intake uh, pressure live. So the only way to access that data is through a test plan. So that's why I am showing you this. So, but you see all those ABLs, if you are connected to the car, all this will be black. For whatever is now graded is because I cannot access it. Um, FUB is our, these are function of operation. So again, you know, the most, the more you use it, the more you understand what these acronyms means, and then you can uh, understand too. All right, let's click on here. Um, should open my double, yeah, double click or click on display. That should open the document. I know this is taking a little longer, but there is a lot of good information that I want to share with every of my subscribers or people that is watching this video, and they. So you understand how to use this very good software and move away to a lot of these now money diggers like Hotel and Snap-on and other companies that are just, and they're not even complete. Uh, you're trying to use a scanner like that and slowly but surely you realize that a lot of their information is corrupting, breaking modules and creating more problems and misguiding you because a lot of that information that they have in there is not even correct. So this is correct and believe me there's some errors on on the diagrams in here and i might be able to show you some in here but so it's always good to check with your information check in your car if it's telling you that it's like let's say the intake temperature differential pressure sensor it has a yellow blue and a white and you go to the car and it's a yellow blue and a red oh well, well, well so that's an error um just make sure your pins are correct and you will be okay but yeah there are errors this is made by a human so it can have errors right okay so this is a function of operation and you scroll down and it tells you about sensors and so on right but again coming back to here if I click and I start to just click on the on the whole phrase, if I click on the plus sign, now I can select everything we see already now here, but more like as specific. If you're looking for more, then click on the phrase. If you know exactly where you're going, then you can go in a specific. Let's say, you know, I have a problem with the, the fuel injectors. Well, then fuel injection, right? So right here, now we got the function of operation. Again, if I will be connected to the vehicle, I will have the uh, test plan to test injectors. I got the function of operation and I have now the wire diagram. SSP is wire diagrams. And this is what I want to go a little deeper, uh, a, a little more deep. Uh, let me just open the function of operation. Again, I just double click in there. It's going to tell you what injectors this vehicle uses. This is, uh, let me see, which injector is control. So this is an N12. I'm not sure, if, they don't look like GDI. I'm trying to scroll down, because it says sequential. Let me see, the fuel injectors are a range of top of the cylinder. Is arranged on top of the cylinder room full is sequential for injection. Each injector is controlled by the DME. Control module via his own final stage. Here the fuel injector time and each cylinder is adapted to operate in status. It's not really telling me if they're the key to it or not. Um, but we go there from how we can find that out. Uh, it's pretty easy. We can go over to parts or um, we can go over to the fuel system and see how is the fuel pump. Uh, look at what I see here. It's showing just a fuel pump in the tank. So I don't see a high pressure pump. <clears throat> so 
So this is the, again the function of operation of all this system. I don't see a high pressure pump. So this is a multi-pore field injection, right? So this looks like it is. All right, so now we know what we're working with. So we go back, we open the field injector uh, wire diagram, and this is also, and this is very important. I wanna share this with you guys. Not sure if this is the best uh, diagram to, to show you, but you see all these menus here on the bottom? Because, you know, a lot of us will see, you know, like, uh, okay, we have the injectors. I can see that they're coming from the DME control unit and then the DME control unit. So the DME is in full control of power and ground for the injectors, right? We can definitely already see that. So because, again, DME and DME. So we have uh, what it seems to be the power on one side, right? Because the power can be shared, but not the, the control. So we know that this is power. So we have in connector a 60211 from pins 17 and 29 we are sharing power over to the injectors if i click in here this is going to open another page on the right and it's going to show you either the location of the connector which it does so we have x6 0 to 11 so is the center connector you see that's very important installation location that's where we are in the connector view so you can see where the pins are located on the, on the computer and on the on the a mini cooper at least when you're here the numbers if you remove the connector they're actually in the computer as well so when you're here you want to go back to full screen click on the image on the left side like right where i got my mouse and then you click on full screen if you click close it's just going to close the document all right but we see is a lot of people like well how i know which one is power and ground and this one is pretty simple so we might go over to another vehicle and we can see like let's say you know like jake uh he was having issues on how to determine on a Baltronic which were the sensors which were the powers and grounds and etc so this is what is here so overview if i click in here an overview this is this is a very good hint guys please take the time to watch this part so you can click on components and it's going to tell you if i click on here it's going to take me over to that specific component right so again it's fuel injector number one if i click dme it's going to open up because it's in both sides but fuel injector two it takes me right into the diagram to where I want to see that component. Let's say, you know, you got a diagram with more components and it start to be scrolling because it can go into really, really big, right? So like this one, and we go over into the DME in a second, so you will see what I'm talking about. But if I click here, uh, well, actually, let me click on the and this so we can see the image big. Now you see it's selected. Uh, if I close this and now clock, uh, click on lines, you see right here, so now it's going to tell me what each of these lines is. So like P slash or underscore, sorry, EBZ1 is supply for injector cylinder one. See, supply, supply, supply. And then terminal 87. So we now have everything selected and we know what this is. So that is how you determine what is on your system so again let's let's close this one because that was a very generic one so let's go over to voltage supply remember this is on the engine side so we can have like you see right here supply dme control unit if i click in here now we have a bigger diagram so we need to know what all those lines in here we again if you are familiar you will understand what a 15 wake up pt can high pt can low etc is in here but again if you click in overview and you go over to lines that's what they tell you where they are so again if we click in here it's going to tell me this a specific line 15 wake up is a wake up signal terminal 15. what is terminal 15 it's ignition right so that is a terminal 15 wake up so this is like bus p8 is what is this in here it's a bus signal from comfort exit so it's it's another signal and then we have pt kind low which is a bus signal pt kind high and we can go there fuses uh, it tells me which wire is terminal 87 uh, be a fuse two, be a whatever, right? So this is very, very good information. We can then zoom out if we don't want to be that close. 
remember when you're here and you want to go back to the um, to the well we can actually collapse collapse this and then hide the lines no well this is like I'm a little trying to go like that because the phone is on my way but yeah so we have this this is how you this is like the overview is by clicking in here but yeah so we this is this is the way you can use this diagram so another thing you can do again remember if you want to go back to any other document you were working on because sometimes you're just looking for information sometimes it's a little hard to find where a sensor is located you can just go back and visit your documents they're all the all the documents that you have open the one is open is still is is going to be looking like this the one they're already closed but you visit they all will be here all right so you can you want to go over to the old, the old pen it's back there boom just click on it and it's going to open the document again uh, well that was a um torch but it's still you, you you get what i'm talking about all right so this is components so we have uh sorry function structure powertrain you got all this uh let me just see what else we can have in here uh, ball gear let's see what we got in ball gear because one thing because you know there is a lot of stuff there is very small okay what we have in here right so you can see is this is exactly what you guys are seeing is exactly i haven't done a zoom so i don't know what it is so in order for me to see what it is i guess in this one at least in this one is mark so we got the intake camshaft sensor uh, sometimes you don't have that sometimes it just says b62248 so you want to know what she, what what each of those components is you have to come and overview and open and now you know that b60213 is the eccentric shaft sensor and so on then we have the van vantronic relay and the vantronic motor so let's click on the vantronic servo motor this is uh Right, again this is uh sorry but i got caught by an alarm in there so hopefully this is going to sync well um but yes yeah, so i hope that you guys are getting uh more and more what i'm trying to show here let's close the overview we can go over to full zoom out and see what we got here because yeah let's say you know we got this eccentric shaft sensor this is this is a good example so you got the eccentric shaft sensor, which, you know, in the new Valtronic motors, like the one Jake was working. Um, and then um, you will see like uh, this whole one, because now the eccentric shaft sensor is built into the Valtronic servo motor. So this is around the same, but what we have here, so which one is power, which one is ground, which, what is this, what we have in here? So let's go over to overview. We're going to go over to lines and we're going to look for, let's set this one so this is um well right here when i click it says supply of sensor actuator so let's uh so you can click on the line let's see if it does the same signal yeah it does signal is eccentric shaft sensor so if you don't have that and you want to look for it well then look for u bbts1 u u u sorry u bb2s1 so this is supply for sensor actuator so we are here if we click well this is not really selecting it from sometimes again is this is probably a little a little oldie for um ista to work properly uh let me see if i can move this this way perfect so uh we have another one that said tds t d d a t one s so right here right so it says signal eccentric chap sensor so this is one signal. Uh, let's see what else we have here. M B B T S one. So let's go over to the M. M B B T S one ground eccentric shaft sensor. So this is our ground and this is our power, right? So we now know which one is power and ground. So supply for the sensor, and this is the ground eccentric shaft sensor. Uh, what is this one right here? TD8. Uh, well, let's see. We already see sometimes when you do that, it stays the name in there. Now it's a little, um, yeah, it stays that way. Because I want to see the next name, you see. Uh, let's click on that one. Okay, PCS1S1. So PCS1S1, signal, another signal. So now we know that this is a signal. 
supply ground. Third one is a signal. PCLKS1. PCLKS1 is another signal. So this is a signal. This is a signal. What is TDS? Uh, TDAT1 is 1S. It's a signal. So we have now one, two, three sensor signals. What is PCS2S? Signal. So this is another signal, right? So we have now four sensor signals. Uh, TDS, uh, TDAT, 2S1 signal. So we now have five signals and that's it. Um, not sure what this wire is in here because it looks like it's nothing. Um, yeah, it's not showing this into anything. Another way to find out is go over to the actual component. If we click on the component, right? Well, it's just showing me an installation. Let's see if we can click on that uh, connector. So yeah, it looks like it's empty. Because yeah, we have no name. If it's no name, that means it's empty. So this is the connector on the eccentric shaft sensor. Again, remember this is an old style uh, Valtronic system where the Valtronic was separate. It was just a motor. So we have power and ground controlled by the computer and it makes it go back and forth, but it's only a two wire. The new ones, they have a three uh, phase motor with five sensors and so on. And you can decipher what is on there like this. So definitely very important. Again, when you want to go full screen, you can just select in here. So we now know that this eccentric shaft needs power and grounds, right? Power, ground, and it has five sensor signals. So we can determine if we go over to the function of operation of the eccentric shaft, it's going to show us very, very um, deep the function of operation. So ball gear, um, we're not going to be able to find it in here because we are in ball gear. So how are we going to find, you know, um, the function of operation of the eccentric shaft? That's where component structure comes in. And this is how we text the work on these cars, finds it, you know, because, okay, we got A, control units, B, sensors, and electrical transducers. So we are now looking for that um, um, eccentric shaft sensor. Well, well, there is a lot of sensors in here, right? It's going to take me a while to find it. Well, not really. Okay, well, let's go back to the documents, right? So where we were, let's go over to this uh, wire diagram. And now let's look for that eccentric shaft sensor number. All right, so we got it right here. So we know that the eccentric shaft is B60213. All right, so let's close this again. B60213. Now we can go over to that B60213. Uh, please don't let me down. Go back again to that. Will be 6213, right? B60 to 13. And it's not in the list. You see, this is this is what happened only with all these, because uh, it should be here. B60. I didn't see it. Oh yeah, it is right here. B60 to 13. Never mind. Oh, but you see, not much information. This is just a connector. So, sorry, location. And sometimes that's going to happen. I mean, I'm sorry, but yeah, it's just the way um, the information is. That's all you can find. I wish I had more information in here. I'm trying to look for anything else because Sometimes they put, you know, B60213, like in here, but if you go over to B60213.8, it might show up with something else. So I'm trying to see if it's anything related to that big number, but I doubt it. Crunch of sensor, no, no. All right, so that was not a good example, but yeah, so that's how you look for. You can also do a text search, and let's put eccentric chef, right? Um... Let me just see component structure because I want to see how they spell it. 
Okay, it's because you have to be very specific when you're here. So in century chaff, you see it with that dash. So let's do, and then you want to put that right there. Because if you don't, it will not show up on anything. So if you go over to a wire diagram, okay, well, now we have a function of operation of the valve train. I didn't see that before. So let's see if it's here. Maybe I missed it and I was already there because I jump into the sensor and not into there. But yeah, so, okay, so the eccentric shaft is right here. It's a nine plug connector. Not much information. See, this is not too helpful. Let me just see if we have anything as far as the eccentric shaft. No, very, very um, small information. There is more information when you are in newer cards. Uh, this is uh, 2001. That's not even tell me. And this is the problem, you know, when you are and and experiencing some of these, like not all the vehicle information has been selected. So this is like a, a generic uh, of of that car. Then you might run into problems like this. Uh, vehicle information, vehicle detail, because you see not all the details of the car, like, you know, like model year is being selected. So that's why this is not giving us all the information. And BMW, uh, ISTA is very, very uh, picky on that. So make sure that when you are connected to the car or you are looking for information, that you can get the model year. And this is not because ISTA is, uh, well, uh, because I did something in our run, it's just ISTA. So this is just, um, again, the servers down for today. I should have done in during the week, but sometimes during the week is really, really hard for me to do it. But either way, you hope uh, you have got it, uh, gather uh, the importance of using this information. You got repair instructions, uh, torque specs, programming and coding, uh, wire diagrams, why are so important to use the wire diagrams? I mean, you can go over to overview, see the lines, see the components, see where they are located. Because if you go into any of the wire diagrams, again, revisit this, easy to access to all the uh, information that you are uh, using. Uh, if I go over to, um, let's go over to the supply, the DME. Let me just see if I can, let me just open one more. I know that I'm taking a lot longer on these, but uh, like I said, you know, it is very important. So if I go over to component structure, I want to go over to uh, con uh, control units because in here, okay, we go over to the A6000 and it's going to be the DME. Uh, we are going to have more. You see, because if I am in the functional structure, you don't see all this. So you got the, um, what is PIV? So what is PIV? You, again, just click on it. Now you see we got all the connectors of the DME. So we now have it's three connectors, two 53 pins and 132 pins, and it's going to tell you everything is in there. So PIV connectors. Um, we have the control unit body side and the control unit engine side. These are completely different than voltage. When I click in here, this is the engine side. Now we're going to have all the sensors and everything. And this is what I was telling you before. In here, now we have no, no names. Do you see B62101? What are they? So you're going to be like, well, I do not even know. If you have all data, they're not going to give you all this. So only with the original information. Overview components. You want to know what each is. Okay, well, T61, I know that's a, a coil, but let's say T6153. T6153, ignition coil. Boom, you click on it, it takes you right there. So let's uh, uh, zoom out again to, maybe if I click in this one, yeah. Okay, so that makes it go again in. But then we understand or we can find out what, you, what each of these are, okay? What is B62101? B62101, oh, it's an oxygen sensor. You know, you see what I mean? So you get to see what or is uh, what what is this? Okay, where well, are you working on the auto sensor? It says uh, 101 catalog. It says before catalog converter. Well, that's that's the upstream O2, right? So behind the O2 
is that the downstream all right you're working on that auto sensor okay if you click in here it's again it's going to open where that component is located boom right there so that's very important where the connected also is because you see we got x6 a20 uh let me see if i have it here no i will have to click in here okay that's upper but you see this is telling me where everything is okay uh, let me click in here again back in the in the o2 sensor and we have right this is the connector that we're looking for the x62101 well the x62101 is uh right next to the connector of the you know this is the old the oxygen sensor and then the connector in between right so now we know what each of those are so but um or where they are do we want to know where they, what they are again overview we're going to close the components we're going to lines and we're going to look for uh well what is 87 87 supply okay this is power easy right uh i lsvp1 so let's go over to the i i lsvp1 signal for oxygen sensor before calorie converter well that's a signal what is then the next one m lsv1 uh, m lsv1 ground for the sensor so power signal ground okay what is the next one t l h b1 all right so go down to the t t l h b1 t l h b1 ground oxygen sensor heating that's not the sensor for the uh, the ground for the sensor is the sensor i'm uh, sorry the ground for the heating element uh, do you, you guys like this i hope you do because i'm trying to share a lot of information now we got a l s b p one all right so we go to a l s b p one a l s b p one signal all seeing sensor before calendar converter so it looks like we got another sensor signal right so we got the i l s b p one and then we got the a l s b p one what is l a s b r one a l s b r one signal all seeing sensor before calendar converter so we have another signal so we will have three it looks like we have three signals in here so this is uh y band o2 right easy night so we have the ground for the heater we got the power that's power for the hidden element as well too and for the sensor and then we have signal 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 right so very easy i hope that you understand how much i'm trying to share with you because this is what it makes at the end a diagnostician quick when you start using the correct information like all this website they're just digging you a yes i understand all that is not so bad all that has very good information identifix is good it's still they have information we cannot get unless you are here yes identifix is uh is good as long as you're looking for the bulletproof uh and you don't want to waste time yeah they have a lot like uh um, you know based on this fall all this diagnosis uh, all this technician has replaced that and a lot of uh, a lot of places are just replacing parts based on that and that's when the bill for the customer goes high 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 and um we are not doing that in our shop in our shop we do diagnostics we don't read codes we do diagnosis uh, we show the customers what are we checking what are we are condemning that sensor and why it needs to be replaced they have I, I'm well, I'm going to start recording more videos in the shop because we've been getting more like a uh, car that has been in four shops and now we're the last hope they have and they have already spent this much money I also want to make people understand yes we can help you but that doesn't mean that you're not going to spend any money like everything they did it was perfect because if everything they did was perfect why are you here so make sure that you try to service riders on the front explain that to the customers when they come uh, we did not spend the money on your car somebody else did so we are here to help you we definitely will get your get your car back in the road get you as soon as possible back in the road but that doesn't mean it's going to be with no money and yes uh yes we're going to have to change something car is not running right right so again uh again another topic that we can talk later i hope that you guys like this type of content let me know if you like it um i can put more and more and i can go in more in depth uh to show you in different cars you want to see xxms 
uh, M series, uh, any four series, three series, I can show you in the vehicle. Uh, and I will do this with that. I will show you how different is, how different is ISTA being connected, how much you can get, and why you can also use an aftermarket diagnostic equipment. It doesn't have to be in the latest and greatest. And that's what they're now trying to do. Watch my short video on my channel. I'll tell missing, you know, messing up with my Alta Ultra. I pay for that. It's my tool. So as soon as I ran out of subscription, now I cannot use it. It's, I mean, I can't use it, but it's super slow. Sometimes it takes like five clicks to get to read the, 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 the full codes. And it's not because the touch screen is having any problems. You know what they did? As soon as the scanner knows it's out of subscription, they have very easy, right code, a slow scanner down. What they're going to make you is make you get desperate. Oh, yeah, am I going to have to just, you pay the subscription and now everything is working perfect. Oh, wow. So it was nothing wrong with the scanner, right? They just made a way to make you pay for the subscription. Same thing like what Apple was trying to do with all iPhones, you know. Oh, yes, we're just slowing it down so because of this uh, uh, phone is not capable. Uh, that's not true. So it was completely capable. They were trying to slow you down so make you and force you to buy new phones. Same thing what is Hotel doing. That should be show. That should be discussed. Let's do together. All technicians are watching this video. Let's put that out there so we can get these companies to start gouging our money start stealing our money we pay for our tools that's my tool don't touch it don't change anything i'm not like messing with your software don't mess with my tool that's it i'm using it for diagnose i don't need to have a subscription again another topic all right guys thank you so much for visiting the channel i know it's going to be probably a little long video but i'm again trying to show as much as i can on here oh you know what <laughs> i haven't even show everything all right, guys, so another thing that I want to show, I know this is going to be a super long video, but yeah, so when you are here, if I would have everything uh, selected on the car, I can click on air. What this is going to do is going to open the website of BMW. So now we know that this is an April 12, 2010 Mini Cooper R57, and it's paper white. So... Uh, you can see uh, all the information um, here, where it was delivered, uh, delivered date, um, all the uh, optional equipment that is installed on the car. You can see what battery uses in here sometimes and everything. Vehicle history, this is where you can see when was the last time this car was on the dealer. It seems like uh, the last time was in 2014, so it's not been in the dealer for the last almost 10 years at least register, so, and, and it will be here, so def it's definitely not been on the dealer for that loan. Uh, other things you can see is service information bulletins. If I am here, these are all the service uh, information bulletins. If I want to search for one, like the FRM that I was showing there, I just click FRM, and then boom, now we have that. And these are where I show these customers the extension on his FRM uh, recall campaign and the full one module is, has an extended li a limited warranty has been increased to 10 years and 156,000 miles and these are all the Mini Coopers are, are covered under that warranty. It says that within the model listed above there are affected and not affected vehicles the model information so read all this information um, this is what you will need to show BMW, and they're trying to tell you, oh, Mini Cooper, oh yeah, this is not, um, this is not a, a cover. Well, it is, it is cover. You need to replace it. Yes, change it. And um, I tell this to the to the customer. So this is how you find that information. If you have any uh, problem with the vehicle, then you can find it here. You can also uh, look for parts. Again, all the groups that I was telling you before. Is here engine so of course this is all engine mechanical parts we can see the um, Baltronic actuator because index entry shaft sensor separate uh, this is the old style um, Baltronic system and then the oil um, solenoids right so this is the old style it's still really good 
but in really ro robust i think that this was giving less problems than the new one uh, but i mean that's just my personal uh, choice let's say if i go back to parts in in here we can see engine electrical we will have you know alternators starter coils uh, injectors computer uh well not the injectors already the injectors are actually in the fuel part that will be probably the next group yeah so right here so this is the fuel system and then yes we have the injectors in here and then air system intake etc but yeah so it's so much so much information when you are here you can also see wire diagrams and you're going to get you know wire diagrams you can get component structure functional st structure as probably today i think that some of that overview let's let's just do an example uh let's go over to com component structure we're going to go over to control units um let me just go quickly to over to the dme uh dme right here and you're going to see that yes the, the wire diagram is here but um there is well actually there is an overview and it looks like they have yeah they have uh, added this was not here before these components and lines and all that was not there before so they're actually adding more and more and it start to remove which is great but yeah sometimes this was or before this was not there so they updated their their size so you can actually see uh, the overview on on some of these components sometimes you're clicking on it doesn't show the pin location or the installation location pin assignment is here so they are they're polishing a little bit better with more updates and more of a bmw website but yes yeah, so you have all this information to get here Again, same thing with, with the repair information. If you go over to unit groups, the same thing we were having in ISTA, which I like for me, I, I'm always an ISTA. I connected to the car. Now I am with the uh, correct information for that vehicle. Everything is there. But if you don't have a chance, you can also, without downloading anything, you can go here. And now you got the repair information. If I go over to, again, the oil pen. Um, hmm. They're not giving much in my repair information, yes. No, that's not the one. You go over to repair instructions. Sorry, guys, talking and explaining. But yeah, you go to repair instructions and now oil pen. We have the replacement of the oil pen. The same thing that we saw in Insta is right here. So you see that it's very powerful. They're trying to help you. You can print this over. Again, uh, it's a lot you can get from this information that all these hotels and the snap they're not even close to offer ever 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 so step away i understand those are good tools they got a, a place for us technicians to use but not for the price they're trying lately to collect uh, they're just nuts they're going crazy they're trying to collect and collect and see where we stop you know what i mean because yes we're making money and they know that and they're trying to just gouge us gouge more money more money let's see to a point they're like people it's not buying their tools so well, well let's lower their price let's just stop it right now guys i think that that is outrageous i don't see why would i ever pay i'll tell two thousand dollars to update at all that, that cost me four thousand that's fifty percent of the value of the tool it's just outrageous no give me two years give me you know like two years for a thousand dollars i mean i think that's fair enough i mean this is a tool that is becoming more and more obsolete why are you charging me two thousand dollars per year uh, in two years i would buy a tool again so no that's uh that's outrageous but again i uh, i don't want to keep making this too too hyper long i hope that you guys like the content I hope that you like this information I'm trying to show. And I was, uh, when I saw Jake's uh, video and he was like, well, I don't know which one is the power, which one is the ground or which one is the signals. This is how you know. So I wanted to share this with all you technicians and diagnosticians that are not that familiar with European vehicles. If you have any more questions or have any questions, please leave it in the comments and I will, I will make it happen so I can share more and more how to work in these European cars. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.